everybody. So we're listed as a technology demo, but that's just because a demonstration of the results of audacious expectations didn't quite fit in the margins. And so actually, what we're here to showcase is what happens when you give students who don't know any better things that are extremely audacious and some would say near impossible. And, and so I run the Innovation Gymnasium at SMU, which is a part of the Kruth Institute for Engineering Education, and we're actually looking at ways to better train our engineering students to become the engineers of the 21st century. So the innovators and the creators and the leaders. And one of the things that we're doing is we actually have a, several programs that result in project-based learning. And so I run these projects with my students. And one of the projects that I do, I give my students very challenging problems and an extremely short time scale to solve that problem and so short as in 10 days. So they show up in my lab on the very first day, I give them about a 20 minute presentation that says, here is your problem. In a week and a half, you need to demonstrate a prototype to myself and the customer who has provided this problem and oh, by the way, the money. And so what we're here to show off today is one of the projects that we've done. Now this is actually the culmination of three projects that we did, phase one, two, and three, and to talk more about it, I'm going to let my student, Austin, who was involved in two out of those three pieces. All right, as Dr. Huntoon said, my name is Austin Hodges. I am a junior at Southern Methodist University, and I'm a computer science major. I first got involved with the innovation gym back in my sophomore year when I was asked to work on a project where it would be remotely controlling an unmanned aero vehicle from a cell phone. So when I first heard about this project, I was thinking, this has to be impossible. And uh, <laughs> there's no way that just a few undergraduates can come in and do this project in just a couple days. Well, fortunately, like you said, they decided to divide it up into four separate 10-day experiences. The first phase we actually took and we developed the cell phone application, which is running on the phone here. And going into this, no one had any idea how to do mobile phone development. It was the first time ever seeing it, so we had to learn all there was to know about it just so we could even complete the phase. And uh, the approach we took for the application is something similar to a GPS map or something like Google Maps and stuff like that, where you pull up a map and you tap locations for it to go there. So you tap a location on the phone and the car would drive itself to that location. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, for the third phase of this, second, second phase of the project, we actually developed our ground testing vehicle, which you see here. And uh, basically for this, we just took an RC car and stripped it down and put our own custom chias on here to prevent rolls and stuff like that. And uh, the components we have on here, as you see on the back, there's a small computer as well as a huge uh, HD video camera and we have an onboard router. And then of course the rest of the sensors, such as a GPS sensor and a compass, needed to actually do all the autonomous navigation. So for the third phase of this project, we linked the first two phases together. So we took the car and the phone application and gave it the, all the ability to be able to drive by itself. So uh, we gave it all the autonomous code, but unfortunately since we're inside and we don't have GPS signal, we have no way to demonstrate that. Uh, but we do have manual controls of the car, which, uh, I'm going to show you a little, do a little bit of driving around while uh, Dr. Hun Toon tells you a little bit about the details and why we're doing this project. Everybody in the front row, if he does a stage dive, catch it, please. <laughs> uh, so, as Austin was saying, this is the third out of the fourth stage. Whereas the next thing that we're going to do is actually take everything that we demonstrate. <laughs> can you see? Uh, and put it on an aerial vehicle. And so the reason for this is we're actually trying to give military troops the ability to control the UAVs that they fly in their own local space. Those of you familiar right now, the military actually controls other UAVs from places like Las Vegas, which causes a huge time delay. And oftentimes that time delay is critical in the environment where their soldiers are working back and forth like in an urban combat situation where it changes so quickly. Uh, and so this is the result, like I said, of ostentatious expectations. And so the takeaway message, not only from this, but from a lot of what I think I'm doing with the students now is results are generated based on the expectations. So if you expect greatness, then you're going to get greatness. And I think Austin is a perfect example of that as well as all of the other students who I've had working for me. So thank you.